Okay, right, super. Um, so um, money and pension service, as I say, we've been established uh, for just around about a year. And the money and pension service brings together three uh, legacy brands that are um, certainly much better known. Um, and they are the money advice service. And the money advice service is a very broad ranging um, government service that provides money management guidance, signposting, um, information, tools and services really around um, looking at how people can improve and learn about money management. Um, it also incorporates pension wise. Uh, now pension wise uh, as an organization is um, anybody over the age of 50 who has uh, either a personal or a workplace pension, um, a DC pension, can get a free consultation through PensionWise, and PensionWise will be able to talk over their individual circumstances um, and look at the options that they've got um, as to where they are in their pension journey. A lot of people have built up pension pots um, over the years, um, but maybe when they're getting towards sort of the latter third of their career, maybe considering what their options are on that front, people then have got an opportunity to talk to pension wise and really understand what the options are um, for the next 5, 10, 20, 30 years. And, and really, we want you to make best use of that pension pot that you've worked hard to accrue. And uh, the third organization that comes under money and pension service or MAPS as I'll refer it to it as, is the pensions advisory service. And really that covers anything and everything to do with pensions that pension wise does not. So it may be that you're in a, a legacy DB scheme. Um, it may be that you've got various bits of pots all over the place and you're not sure how to amalgamate. There could be a whole host of reasons, but um, the pensions advisory service um, also offers free advice and guidance and so forth around that. Now, um, about 12 months ago, uh, MAPS um, was um, into the listening phase for developing a, a UK strategy for financial well-being. And that, as I said earlier, was published in January of this year with just wonderful timing in life, but such is. And the UK strategy for financial well-being um, runs through until 2030. And um, really, there are five sort of central um, pillars, areas in which we want to focus on alongside uh, stakeholders across the country um, in order to try and improve the nation's um, financial well-being. Naomi, could I ask you to move on a slide, please? Smashing, thank you. Uh, well, why do we need it? Why do we need it? Um, there's a whole host of reasons that, that we need a strategy for financial well-being. Um, if you think back, um, those of us who've been in business for some time, um, the 70s and the 80s started to see a coming together of workplace involvement around things like health and safety, Health and Safety at Work Act 1974. The last five or 10 years, last five years in particular, has started seeing um, issues around, for example, mental health and well-being coming to the fore. But what we've not really seen a great deal of, and um, I think that that really many governments over the last decades have missed, missed a trick on this, is financial well-being. And really, what do we mean by financial well-being? Financial well-being is about, really, it's about empowering individuals to understand more about um, what their options are with regards to their money and their pensions um, really over the course of their lifetime. Um, some of the figures that you can hopefully see on, on the screen right now, um, over 5 million children do not get a meaningful financial education. Now, there are certain elements uh, in the national curriculum now that are starting to address that, but that's not been around too long in its current guise. Um, a lot of children um, are not really getting any mean, meaningful financial education at home for a whole host of reasons. Um, and I think if you start to understand and we can start to develop a strategy as to how we can financially educate uh, children um, younger 
uh, and more wisely um, so that they can start to develop those skills and tools um, to better manage money and better make decisions um, into their early lives. That That's a positive thing. Um, we're also looking at um, short term credit and issues around that. We've all seen over the last few years some of the horror stories around, for example, um, payday loans obviously have had a great deal of the press. Um, more recently, um, you know, there are short term options to buy now, pay later through through various companies and retailers. And we, we have huge concerns. There are probably in excess of nine million people, we believe, at the moment in the country who are over indebted. Now, in, inherently, there's nothing wrong with debt. Um, debt, as you will all be aware, as, as business leaders, um, debt plays a fundamental role within the economy. Um, and we wouldn't function as we did without debt. But to get to the point of over indebtedness um, simply means that you are pushing problems out financially. Um, and money and pension service really wants to look at ways of um, guiding people away from the use of short-term credit um, to really um, pay for their day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week activities. Um, <clears throat> we also we also want to try and look, and, and this one at the moment, I'll caveat slightly. We also want to try and look at savings. Um, now, right at the moment, um, you know, it's it's very challenging times. Saving pots across the country are probably being tapped um, at a rate. Um, that is is unprecedented as people are struggling. But we do know that that figure of 11 and a half million that's up on your screen, we do know this is before COVID-19. This is 2019 information and 2019 data. Um, and we know that, that between 11 and 12 million people simply don't have more than 100 pounds in savings as a buffer um, to fall back on um, should should circumstances require it. And quite clearly, um, the last uh, six or so weeks of lockdown, um, employees being furloughed by the million, um, redundancies going through the roof, quite clearly, you know, it's, it's not rocket science that many, many people are not in the position to have that financial resilience. And that is something that over the long term, we, we really want to address. And the other major area we look at as well is, is planning for retirement. And I remember, I, I'm in my late 40s now. I remember when I was in my early 20s and sort of um, putting my toe into a career. Um, I had the options to pay a little bit of money into a workplace pension scheme. And I did that. It wasn't very much. But at the time, I remember thinking, well, I may as well because... I get a little bit of extra help from the government in terms of tax relief. Um, and but a lot of people don't think about it at that age. They don't start thinking um, in their 20s and 30s really what life might be like in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and, and all. We're all living longer. A lot of people um, don't have the opportunity to save into pensions. And a lot of people don't have the spare income to save into pensions or plan for their long-term retirement. So what MAPS wants to do, um, over the next 10 years, we want to really change uh, the way in which this country looks at longer-term financial planning uh, and the well-being of individuals. Naomi, could I ask you to move, move on, please? Okay, so there's some... Thanks, Naomi. Um, in terms of employees, which we're going to focus on in about five minutes time, um, you can see on the slide, you know, a financially healthy nation is good for all of us. Now, I will stress to you that this is not about who's in government. Um, I am completely independent. And although we report to the DWP, um, MAPS will exist um, whoever should get voted in at the next election. Um, so I'm really saying a financially healthy nation is good for it's good for us as individuals. It's certainly good for communities. Um, it develops um, strength and coherence and bonds within communities. Businesses um, quite clearly will benefit from a financially healthy nation in in two interlinked ways, primarily. 
the wider economy is likely to function better um, if more individuals are financially healthy or their financial well-being improves. But also as well, as a business on an, an individual level as a business, um, we do know that many, many people, and I, I, I won't um, bring the stats up today because they're quite in-depth, but we know that there are a lot of people who are bringing money worries into the workplace. Um, and that is having an impact quite clearly on them as individuals. But it's also having an impact on um, the businesses within uh, the businesses where they where they work. Um, you know, it, there, there are correlations that are quite clear between um, financial uh, well-being and productivity. Um, and although uh, not too many studies have been done in this country at the moment, because it's a relatively new topic, um, certainly we know from wider evidence um, that there is definitely causation between financial well-being and, and productivity being lower. And we all know that productivity um, is an ongoing uh, challenge in this country com compared to many others. Um, Naomi, please, if you would. Ah, smashing. OK, uh, right. Bit of a bit of a color bomb here uh, on this one. But really, these are our these are our 10 year, our 10 year goals. Um, and I suppose what I will say is that when we were looking at the baseline numbers to base this uh, 10 year strategy on, quite clearly, this work was done last year um, and the baseline is going to change for uh, pretty much all of those five central uh, strategy cores. Um, financial foundations, so children, young people, young families and, and parents and so on. Um, we're looking at then a nation of savers. So we're really looking at the, the two categories that we refer to as struggling and squeezed. Um, these are, broadly speaking, people who, who I alluded to on the last slide, who really have, you know, a hundred pounds or less of financial resilience um, in, in their environment. Um, credit counts, people who are who are often using credit for food and bills. And, um, you know, that necessarily isn't just about payday loans. It could be about uh, loan sharks. It, it could be about pawnbrokers. Um, th there's all sorts of ways in which people access um, high credit, uh, high, high paying credit um, that in the long run makes uh, their lives a lot more difficult. One of the other major areas we're looking at is debt. Um, there are in excess of nine or so million people who are um, well over indebted in this country. Um, and our research tells us that out of those nine or so million people, uh, just over 30% of those people have ever sought out or actively engaged with um, some form of independent uh, professional debt advice. Um, and that really is quite a frightening figure um, because that really means that there are six or so million adults out there who are badly over indebted but are not making um, any engagement with support and help. And that support and help is available to them. And I'm gonna come on to that um, in the next section. Um, we do also know that um, there is an under provision. There is a supply and demand issue in the country around debt advice. We believe that the stands is around 600,000 appointments a year. Um, so we're also looking at ways in which we can ramp up um, debt advice capability in this country um, and so that we can we can help more of those people who are who are missing out. And then finally, you know, everybody, the national goal on, on future focus is is really about um, helping people and looking at ways through policy and so forth that people can understand more about how to plan for their long term financial um, health um, from a younger age and understanding what the drivers um, are around that, um, how they can uh, access guidance and help for that throughout their lives. 
Um, and then as they approach their sort of, um, you know, second half of life um, and they start to think more and more about, you know, perhaps when their career might end, how long they're working for, you know, what are the options with that? And how can I make the best of that? And there is there is free advice out there and guidance out there. And again, this is something we want to point people towards. Um, Naomi, what I'm what I'm going to look to do, I think now is rather than dive deep into um, this strategy anymore, what I'd like to do is um, if I if I link to Map's website and share that, is that going to work? Do you think? Do you want to go on that link and share it to everyone else? Yeah, that's what we're going to try and look at doing. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I'll, I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm going to hold that on there on that screen, um, but I'm going to talk to you for a couple of minutes about the Money Advice Service um, and what sort of uh, services it can offer your employees. Um, and I'm I'm going to then sort of throw it open to you guys a bit. Um, and um, if there's anything um, in particular that I might have covered or that you, that you wish to cover um, about sort of financial uh, guidance and, and support, um, feel free to to ask questions um, either on the chat thing, which I believe I can see down here. I'm just having a look at that now. Yes, I can um and uh or or through through the camera and the um and the microphone so the money advice service um is is probably the best known of the three legacy brands of maps and the money advice service you know simply its mission is to help people manage their money and we do this through um impartial advice services really we look to improve people's understanding of money matters and their ability to manage their money well. And we do this across um, a broad range of headline areas. Uh, we look at issues around um, budgeting and um, managing money itself on a day-to-day. On -day. So, for example, we've got budget planners. We've got tools around money health checks. Um, we've got all sorts of information that you can access through numerous channels um, in order to try and get um, a better understanding of some of the more uh, basic money management issues that perhaps you want to learn a bit more about or perhaps that you, you struggle with. We also look at areas around um, savings and um, investing. Um, how do you save money? Where, where do you start? If you want to save some money and you, you have that bit you can put aside, well, where, where do you start? There's there's a thousand places that you can put it. Um, but what does it mean? Um, and we can, you know, we can help guide people towards what may be the best way for them to save, what might be the best way for them to sort of, um, you know, access the services that they need, perhaps. Um, and if you've not had that opportunity to save, if you've not got spare money, you probably haven't thought about it. Um, and that's perfectly understandable. And we are completely independent at MAPS. We will not uh, be pointing anybody in the direction of um, a private service provider. Um, lots of private service providers um, will put the money and pension service logo on their websites. Be very careful of that. Um, we are, are pretty hot at getting companies to take down um, we do not endorse um, private financial services in any way, shape or form. Um, but a lot of companies want to sort of piggyback off our, our brand a wee bit. So areas around savings, we can obviously help um, your employees with areas around, for example, insurance. Um, right now, um, you know, a lot of households will be looking where can they um, make some savings? Um, you know, we're all doing that at the moment because we're trying to uh, understand what the ramifications in our in our own households are over the coming months. Um, we're also looking really at homes now. Housing housing um, is is on the agenda anywhere, um, but you know, in Cornwall, um, I know there are particular issues um, around housing. There are actually some very similar agendas in in Dorset, in West Dorset, where I live. Um, you know, there are a lot of people who simply cannot afford to purchase properties um, 
in their own regions in their own towns and villages um, because the prices are simply too high there's a lot of issues around second home ownership and so forth so the money advice service can also provide um, a lot of free independent information around um, calculations around mortgages stamp duties what type of mortgages are out there really helping people to get an understanding um, of what options that they may have in terms of terms of their housing and that that also applies to the rental sector as well we've got a lot of expertise and skills and ways in which we're able to um, have a listen to uh, the challenges that people are facing and, and really provide them with um, opportunities to be empowered enough to make their own decisions but by having that that independent advice at their fingertips we also work heavily around debt and, and borrowing and the money and pension service is the uk's largest funder grant funder of um, independent debt advice so for example we fund um, the vast majority of citizens advice uh, where you can go and have um, an individual um, debt consultation with a with a very highly trained debt advisor um, but we also look at the wider ramifications of debt. So, um, you know, talk to us, come to us if your employees are struggling with areas around loans. Uh, it may be around arrears. Um, that could be with arrears to a local authority. It could be to a mortgage lender, could be to a housing association, could be to a private landlord. We, we have trained advisors who can help you understand um, what the best course of action is um if you are struggling with debt and arrears and i would i would really ask you please encourage your your employees your your friends your family your your networks out there in cornwall i am keen to reach as many people as possible um there are going to be some very difficult choices ahead for many many households so um i will be providing information to um naomi at the chamber um after this event and um you know I, I i would urge you to circulate that um as, as wide and far as you can across cornwall because i really want people to know that help is there for them please don't suffer in silence if you're having problems um i'll come back to you with all the the contacts and all those bits and bobs um sort of more towards the end we can also help you and your employees um around the work and benefits um sphere there are going to be many people at the moment who are um, applying for benefits, um, primarily universal credit, um, who've who've never been in that position before. And I think that it's probably going to be quite um, an upsetting and quite a lonely time for a lot of people having to do that. Um, you know, and um, it's a, it's a minefield out there. Um, please come and talk to us. If, if you um, are accessing benefits, if you're currently on benefits or if you've got a combination of working and benefits, it doesn't matter. We do not judge anybody in the position they are in. We are simply here to guide you towards um, first class independent um, um, advice around, around what benefits you might be entitled to. Um, how to make the most of them, how to actually get a hold of them and how to engage with them. Um, and if you've got problems, again, I urge, please, please talk to the Money Advice Service. And also as well, you know, families and care, that's an issue that we look at a lot. Um, maternity and paternity rights. So, for example, you know, um, the normality of life is is carrying on at the moment, even though we're all on, on lockdown, um, you know, and, you know, people are having babies. Uh, unfortunately, you know, we're obviously um, losing loved ones at the moment as well. People are still getting divorced and separating. You know, there are a lot of carers out there in our community doing some fantastic work who need support. Illness and disability issues, uh, rights and challenges haven't disappeared just because COVID-19 is on our doorstep. So we can help you with those things. Um, and and really, I would I would urge you to um, again, you know, share share the contact details for Money and Pension Service wide and uh, wide and far, um, and, uh, and and we'll we'll try and get you hooked up with people that can provide some some genuine 
independent guidance and, and hopefully some solutions to problems you may have.